to have Marco um, speaking today, and he will talk about the formations of Lagrangian submanifolds in log symplectic manifolds. Thank you very much, Enrique, for the introduction. And uh, well, thank you to the organizers for the opportunity to talk. So I will talk about, um, well, a joint work with uh, Stefan Credence, who is uh, my PhD student and also a PhD student of uh, Janusz Markutz. We are sharing him, so to say. And uh, so this is one chapter in his thesis and he will uh, defend next week. So he will be, well, um, independent, so to say, uh, very soon. Okay, so one second. Okay, what is this about? So this is about Lagrangian submanifolds, but not in symplectic geometry, rather in the setting of log symplectic geometry, which is, uh, well, actually relatively close to symplectic geometry. And uh, in particular, uh, particularly interested in the deformations of Lagrangian submanifolds. And to study deformations, well, in, in of geometric objects, what you typically do is first prove a normal form theorem so that you have a better control of the geometry. That's what I will do here in section two. And then very often there is some algebraic structure that governs the deformations, a, a di differential graded Lie algebra or a L infinity algebra. In this talk, there will be no L infinity algebras. And once you, you establish what the, the algebraic structure is governing the deformations, you can use it to get some geometric consequences. That's what I will do at the end. So let's start with something well, very classical. So Alan Weinstein's Lagrangian neighborhood theorem in symplectic geometry around the Lagrangian submanifold. Your symplectic manifold looks like the contention bundle of the Lagrangian. And um, so that allows you to study C1 small deformations of your Lagrangian submanifold. Um, so any, any, any Lagrangian submanifold nearby L is necessarily the graph of a section of the cotangent bundle. So the graph of a one form and um, such, a, the, um, such a graph is actually Lagrangian if and only if the one form is closed. So this is nice because this is a, a linear condition. So a linear equation. So this the term differential on L. And furthermore, there is a natural notion of um, equivalence between Lagrangian submanifolds. Um, geometrically, is given by um, Hamiltonian isotopy, and and uh, and it turns out that it is equivalent to the corresponding one forms being in the same cohomology class, so differing by an exact form. So, in the conclusion, is that the modular space of uh, Lagrangian submanifolds C one close to L modular Hamiltonian isotopy is an open subset of the origin in, um, in H1 of L, which typically is finite dimensional. And, uh, and that's, that's very nice because the modular space is, uh, well, smooth and finite dimensional, um, well, say if L is compact. And uh, well, so this project arose from the, well, from the desire to answer the question, what happens in the log symplectic case? So is, are things as nice or not? Probably um, most of you in the audience already came across log symplectic manifolds, but let me um, well, quickly go, go through them um, for you. So these are Poisson manifolds. So I will take the point of view of Poisson, of Poisson geometry. These are Poisson manifolds, even dimensional, sort of the top power of the bivector field, which is a section of a certain, of, well, of this line bundle is transverse to the zero section. So that's a generic condition. And uh, because of transversality, you get a hypersurface, also called singular locus, and it inherits uh, a symplectic structure of core rank one. So it's regular, the symplectic leaves have core dimension one. And, but you get more structure. You also get a Poisson vector field, which is transverse to the leaves. And uh, so it arises as follows. You take um, a modular vector field of M. So, 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 this, so well, assuming that M is connected, for instance, the modular vector field is not unique. It depends on a choice of volume form, but any two modular vector fields differ by Hamiltonian one. So well, they are unique up to something nice. And um, any modular vector field is tangent to, to this uh, hypersurface Z. And that's and so any of these is uh, gives the Poisson vector field transverse to the symplectic leaves. A couple of examples, and I will try to draw one. Um, so when the dimension 
of the manifold is two. So log symplectic manifolds are also known as Radko surfaces because Olga Radko introduced them in her thesis around 2002, I believe. And um, so this is a concrete example in coordinates on RN, and it turns out that it's the local model point in the hypersurface. So, so they all locally they all look like this nearby point in the hypersurface. So let me attempt to draw this. So in the case of R2, um, so so we have two open symplectic leaves, and then on the x-axis, the x-axis consists of a bunch of symplectic leaves with are points. So we have two open symplectic leaves here, and and, and then a bunch of zero-dimensional ones. And the well, for the choice of uh, for the canonical choice of volume form, uh, the, home, the the modular vector field well, is just the Dirac swamp. Um, okay, so 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 in particular on an open dense subset, a, a log symplectic structure is always symplectic, and well, the interesting stuff, well, you could argue, happens nearby this hyper uh, the hypersurface that I will always call Z. Um, well, it's well known that you can study log symplectic geometry. Marco, I think you occasionally cover your microphone, and uh, we kind of only just hear noise. So just uh, be be aware of that, please. Okay. Thanks. Okay, I'll try to pay attention. So if it happens again, please let me know because I have no way to know. Um, okay. So so given the hypersurface. You can associate a certain Lie algebra called the B tangent bundle, and and uh, and you can do symplectic geometry there. Um, so that's that's a well, realization of Guillermo Miranda Pires. It's a B symplectic form. So it's, it's the symplectic form on this on this Lie algebra is exactly equivalent to your post log symplectic structure, and so you can apply lots of techniques from symplectic geometry. As in symplectic geometry, it happens that if the manifold is compact, then um, the space of nearby Poisson structures, in this case, modular isotopy, is well, an open subset of the second cohomology. It's just that now, now here you have to take the second um, B cohomology. And also an analogy with symplectic geometry, if M is compact, then you have a class in degree two so that all its powers um, are non-zero, but in this case, except for the top one. So, so all the even cohomology is non-zero, except possibly for the top one, but as well, as, as you, as is well known in symplectic geometry, also the top one is, is non-zero. So, okay, so, so, so these are various facts that, well, show that in many respects, log symplectic geometry behaves like symplectic geometry, so as I said, I want to look at Lagrangian submanifolds. There is a general definition of Lagrangians in Poisson geometry. Um, I, I, I have it here. So, so a submanifold is Lagrangian if, well, you, you basically look at the intersection with the symplectic leaves. So, so morally speaking, the intersection has to be Lagrangian inside every symplectic leaf. Now the intersection is not necessarily clean with the symplectic leaves, so, well, the definition is just the same statement, but at the level of tangent spaces. Um, okay, so, so Lagrangian submanifolds are in particular quasotropic. Quasotropic submanifolds are a very natural um, class of submanifolds in Poisson geometry. The Lagrangian ones, admittedly, um, less. But well, in, in Poisson, uh, in Poisson uh, um, manifolds that almost looks like the symplectic ones, such as um, those we're dealing with today. Uh, I think they're still quite natural. Here is an example. Um, so if the singular locus Z, where the rank of the log symplectic structure drops by two, if that is compact, then well, it's known that um, Z has to be a symplectic mapping torus. So, so that means that it's, um, it arises as follows. You, you take a symplectic manifold, you cross it with zero one, and then you glue the two um, edges, so to say, using a symplectomorphism. Um, so this way you get one well, Poisson manifold where the leaves are well constant times, times the, the symplectic manifold S. 
And if you take, if you choose a Lagrangian inside the symplectic manifold S, any Lagrangian, and well, you ask that it behaves well with respect to the symplectomorphism, for instance, that it's uh, preserved by the symplectomorphism, um, then so doing this mapping torus construction, you get a Lagrangian submanifold in, uh, in, in Z. Um, which is a co-dimension, a co-rank one regular Poisson structure. So, so this, uh, well, this is an example and, and it fits with what happens in the log symplectic case because as I said, in the log symplectic case, if the, the singular locus is compact, then it looks like this. Do you mean to say it's Lagrangian in M or in, in that? Um, well, both. So, um, oh, Z is also Poisson. Yes, Z, Z is a Poisson submanifold um, in M. And the Lagrangian condition, well, it's essentially a condition about the, how the submanifold intersects with the symplectic leaves. Yeah, I have a question. To, uh, that, um, could you go? Yeah, the, the S at the top of the page is not the same as the S at the bottom of the page. Is that right? Um, say it again, sorry. The S at the top of the page, which is S is a symplectic leaf, yeah. is not the same thing as the S that occurs down well, in the definition of the symplectic mapping part. So yeah. Strictly speaking, not, but I, so I use the same notation because, um, well, if you start with the log symplectic manifold, look at its uh, singular locus, uh -huh. then all the symplectic, and, and you assume that, um, that, um, that the singular locus has a compact leaf. Mm -hmm. Probably I should also say that Z is compact. Then the symplectic leaves in the singular locus are all, are all symplectomorphic. Uh-huh. So, well, okay. and I denoted them with the same letter as S. Um, okay. Uh, thanks. So, okay. So, okay, so now again in the log symplectic manifold, well, what kind of Lagrangians do we have? Well, generally speaking, well, if you have a Lagrangian that is transverse to the singular locus, well, if you have a Lagrangian that is contained, that is contained in M minus the singular locus, then that's not so interesting because they're essentially doing symplectic geometry. If the intersection with the singular locus is transversal, then you can use the techniques of um, well, B, I don't know, B symplectic geometry and, and, and mimic what happens in symplectic geometry. That was done by Charlotte Keshoff, uh, Lukat in her um, PhD thesis. And you get as a normal model, the B cotangent bundle of, of the Lagrangian. And, and then you get a result that is very analog to the symplectic one. So we, we decided to look at the opposite extreme, namely the one where the Lagrangian is contained inside the singular locus. And the most interesting case there, well, if the Lagrangian is half dimensional, if there's dimension N, then it has to satisfy this. So it has to be transverse to the, to the leaves in the, in the singular locus. And this, um, because of this transverse intersection, it inherits a foliation, which is core rank one, and which is actually, defined by a closed one form on L. So from now on, I will assume this. So the Lagrangian is always inside a singular locus. And well, for simplicity, I will assume that M is orientable. In the, in the little sketch that I made about the local model in R2, where the singular locus was the x-axis, um, well, there, there is not much choice. So, so, so L must be, well, an open interval in the x-axis. But in general, of course, the situation is more interesting. So let's look at, um, well, normal forms. So that's the first step, the first thing to do. And once we have a normal form, we can start to look at the deformations. So, so one can get a normal form in two steps. So first you just, so you just look at a singular locus Z. Um, so a core rank one uh, regular Poisson manifold, and you try to describe the neighborhood of L inside here. And then you look at Z inside M. So this was, the second part was already done by others, luckily. Um, so, so the first step, in the first step, um, well, the normal model looks like this. 
So the normal model is the cotangent bundle of the foliation. So what does that mean? Um, so you have this foliation on L. So in this case, at least in this picture, at least two, dim uh, two dimensional in the foliation, well, has to have co-dimension one, so it's one dimensional. So you take the cotangent bundles of all the leaves and you put them together. And the cotangent bundles of uh, the cotangent bundle of any well leaf or of any manifold is of course symplectic. So that gives you the symplectic foliation for for the Poisson structure and the normal bundle on the normal model. And we, we, I will denote it by P canonical. Okay, second step. Luckily, this was done by Gideon Min Miranda Pires in the paper. Um, I don't know, around 2013 or something like that, 2012 maybe. And um, so the local model is the hypersurface cross R with a certain, well, bivector field, of course, for some bivector field, which looks like this, is the restriction of pi 2z to the hypersurface. And then it has a vertical component. So T is, T is the coordinate on R and wedge the, well, the restriction to Z of the modular vector field. So putting these two things together, um, well, we get the following statement, which is not yet the final statement. The local model around um, the Lagrangian is um, the, the, the potential bundle of defoliation. So because that is how Z looks, looks like nearby the Lagrangian cross R with, well, this, the, the same formula as above. And, and here V is what corresponds to the restriction of the modular vector field. So this, um, this is not yet satisfactory because, um, so this vector field V has, uh, well, um, has nothing to do with the, with the Lagrangian submanifold L. So, so this picture is not completely adapted to, Lagrange, to the Lagrangian submanifold L. And we would like actually description in terms of L alone. So luckily there is some freedom because the, the modular vector field is not uniquely determined. It depends on the choice of uh, what volume form, volume form on the big manifold M. So we can, um, we can, we can, so, so we're free to replace V by any other Poisson vector field in the same cohomology class. And uh, so we want to choose if such a vector field that is well, well, well behaved with respect to the Lagrangian. Um, so I, I, will, I will say how, how, how we can do that in the, in the next slide. First, let me recall a fact about the symplectic geometry because well, this is easier to understand. So if you have a cotangent bundle, then um, so any symplectic vector field can, can be made vertical by adding a Hamiltonian one. So by vertical, I mean tangent to the fibers. And if, if uh, so once you do that, you get a, a simple active vector field, which is vertical. And then necessarily it must be constant on every fiber. And uh, so that means that, that it gives you um, a section of the cotangent bundle, which is just a one form. And as a one form seen as a one form, um, it must be um, closed. So, so this is, well, um, okay, this is not surprising if it's in, well, in cohomological terms, the, 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 um, well, the, 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 post, the first Poisson cohomology here is the same, is isomorphic to the first Aram cohomology of N. So this is um, not very surprising. Now we can do this um, in the foliated setting. So unfortunately I have to introduce some, some mutation. So here L is a foliated manifold. So the case of interest, of course, is when L is uh, my Lagrangian submanifold and FL is the co-dimension one foliation induced by intersecting with the um, symplectic foliation of the singular locus Z, but this is more general. Okay, so, okay, so this is a statement about um, um, classes in the first for some cohomology because, well, I'm mean, interested in the model in, in, in a certain Poisson vector field. So I want to understand how this behaves. So in the, in the, the statement is that given such a class, you can find a representative, so a Poisson vector field, which is nicely behaved in the following sense. 
first um, is projectable to L. So, so this is a vector bundle over L, so it's projectable to L, and it gives a vector field on L whose flow preserves the foliation. And second, um, once you take the lift of this vector field on L, and you subtract it from your original vector field so that you get a vertical one, it is constant on a very fiber and seen as a well differential form, it's closed. So to be so, so what it gives you is a is a foliated one form and, and it has to be closed with respect to the foliated differential. Um, so this is just this is well essentially the foliated version of uh, what I said about the cotangent bundle in the previous slide. And here, well, it's a picture. I don't know how, how telling. So, so, so every every symplectic, no, every Poisson vector field on on the cotangent bundle of the foliation, which, as we saw, is just the disjoint union of the cotangent bundles of the leaves. Um, um, well, can be modified by adding Hamiltonian vector fields in such a way that it's the sum of the lift cotangent leaves, so to say, of a vector field on the base. So that's some kind of horizontal component and a constant vertical vector field. Um, okay, so in using this, um, well, we can give a concrete type isomorphism between the first Poisson cohomology and well, something else. So something else in this case is the um, well, a, a quotient, a quotient of the vector fields on the manifold L that preserve the foliation cross the first foliated cohomology. And so the map from left to right is, is essentially what I what, what I showed in the in the previous slide, but it's easier to describe it maybe the other way around. Um, so if, so if, you, if you take elements in this in this uh, well, quotient spaces, you you can construct a nice Poisson vector field on, 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 on T star of defoliation, well, in formulas given like this. So, so this is the vertical part, and, and this is the, the horizontal part, so to say, which is a cotangent lift. So, okay, so now, so, so going, back, going back to the log symplectic setting. Um, so the point at which we were was that we, that we had a, a local model for the lux symplectic structure by the Lagrangian. And it involved a certain Poisson vector field, namely, well, essentially the restriction to Z to the singular locus of the modular vector field. And since we have um, the freedom of changing this vector field within its uh, Poisson cohomology class in Z, um, we, can, we can assume without loss of generality that it's of this form. So, so this looks well, complicated, I guess. Um, it's a long formula, but uh, well, the point is that this is something that depends only that depends on two choices. One choice is x. I will always call it x, a vector field in the base, L, and then a choice of uh, closed uh, foliated one form. Yeah. Okay. So this is the normal the yes the normal model to which I was uh, referring. And, and once we have the local model, we can, well, try to see what the deformations are of L. So, so the normal model, well, was, so as a manifold is, was this one, the cotangent bundle of, of, um, of the foliation on L cross R. This is, well, we look at it as a vector bundle over L. Um, okay, so, so if we want to look at, uh, Submanifolds that are C1 close to L, we have to look at sections of this vector bundle. I will always denote these sections by alpha and f, alpha comma f, where alpha, well, is a section of the first uh, factor, so to say, and f of the second, so f is just a function. And um, okay, so and, and since things are so explicit, you can actually compute things by hand. And uh, so you, you take you take such a such a pair, you you check when when its graph is Lagrangian, and and it turns out that it happens exactly when these um, two equations are satisfied. So, um, 
Okay, so, so what do these two equations say? Well, alpha is a foliated one form. And uh, this question, the first equation just says that it has to be closed with respect to the like leafwise theorem differential. So this is nice because it's a linear condition. And um, the condi well, and then there is a second equation that involves both both f and a. And uh, like if, if there wasn't the second term, then it would just be saying that f is well closed and therefore leafwise constant. But there is also this second term, and um, and well, the second term is quadratic because you have both f and alpha appearing here. And um, yes, so, and as expected, these, these equations depend on the choice of, uh, well, let me call it modular vector field. Um, and, and we encoded the modular vector field by choosing the, the, the gamma here, oh, sorry, horrible. By, by choosing um, the foliated one from gamma in the vector field X. So it's natural that they also appear in the equations. Okay, so this, this system is actually not so bad. I will, I will, I will um, explain this actually now. Okay, so, um, well, maybe, maybe let, me, let me go back one second. So, so, th so this system is not linear. You have a quadratic term, but it's very close to being a linear one. So you can first solve the first equation so find the close alpha, and this is a one linear process, linear operation. Then once alpha is fixed, the second equation becomes a linear. It's, an, it's a linear equation in F. And because of that, it's, um, well, if you do this, then, um, then, then you can see that, um, so deforming, so given a Lagrangian section alpha comma F, deforming L, which is the zero section of our, of our vector bundle into here, can be thought of as a two-step process where you first deform L along, uh, along alpha. So you stay inside the singular locus. And then you, in the second step, you go out of the singular locus by, by following F, by pushing out the graph of alpha following F. So here I tried to write it in a, in a different way. So this is the concrete path of Lagrangian sections that starts at zero and ends at alpha comma f. Um, okay, so, so this is, um, well, one consequence of this, well, interesting consequence, I think, is that the space of Lagrangian sections is connected. And that's something, um, well, not very common in symplectic geometry, in, sorry, in Poisson geometry, at least in the more, in the more general context of um, quasotropic submanifolds. For general quasitropic submanifolds, well, in general for some manifolds, actually even in uh, symplectic manifolds, it's not at all clear that the space of um, nearby quasitropics is is connected. Actually, I don't think it's known um, if it is true or not, but in this case it is, and we could see this because the, the equations are very simple. Now, um, okay, so. Um, so as is often the case, um, well, the, the deformations of a, well, in this case, geometric object are governed by an algebraic structure, um, often a DGLA or an L-infinity algebra, here just a DGLA. So I will try to uh, explain this um, here. So there are, there are lots of formulae, um, but uh, well, I'll, I'll try to make my point in the second part of the slide. So, so, so what this proposition is saying is that there is a certain differential graded Lie algebra on the sections of, well, a vector bundle, which is just wedge of the dual of, um, well, our normal model. And um, so maybe the most geometric way to think about it is as sums of foliated uh, forms on, on, uh, well, on this foliation on L plus, well, a copy it itself, but with one, with a degree shift. And uh, so differential created Lie algebra means that, well, first of all, you have a, you have a differential on this uh, um, graded vector space, and you also have a graded Lie bracket, and they're compatible. So this is a derivation with respect to the bracket. Um, so the differential is, um, well, the one that appears in the equations that I, that I, that I, that I showed a couple of slides ago. 
So we have the foliated differential in one factor in the second defoliated differential twisted by defoliated one from gamma. And well, then there is some, some bracket um, term. Okay. Uh, so, so, sorry, could, could you recall us what is gamma? Yes, um, so I'll have to go back a couple of slides. So um, yes, probably this is this is the best one. <laughs> so so gamma is a is a closed foliated one form on the Lagrangian submanifold. And uh, what the geometric interpretation? I mean, the the, the reason why it uh, it appears is that um, well, such a thing is a section of the um, uh, cotangent bundle of the foliation. And, and therefore, I can view such a thing as a vertical constant vector field on, on the cotangent bundle of the foliation. And, and, and the latter, well, is a model for the singular locus Z. So out, out of this, I get a vector field on the singular locus uh, Z, which well, is given by this formula. Okay, thanks a lot. You're welcome. So I think I was here. Okay, so, um, okay, like the essence, well, I guess it's here. So there is a nice algebraic structure with the property that its special elements are ex parameterize the Lagrangian deformations. So, the precise, the, so the, the precise statement is here. So the special elements are the degree one elements that satisfy this, well, let me say natural equation that comes out of the DGLA. It is called Mara Cartan equation. So you apply the, the unit operation, the differential, and the binary operation, and you want the sum to be zero. And uh, so this happens exactly when the graph is Lagrangian. Okay, so, so there is actually a general construction for um, for in for the algebraic structure that governs the formations of quasotropic submanifolds in Poisson geometry. So that's due to Catania Felder. And um, well, we, so I should probably skip the details. Sorry for writing more than I can say. And um, so, so, um, so, so again, the, the underlying space is sections of wedge of, well, the normal bundle of the, of the quasotropic or, or Lagrangian submanifold. The, 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 the brackets are given, well, by with this derived bracket, derived, um, uh, yeah, derived, derived bracket formula. And a way to interpret this, well, what this sees are essentially um, the jets of the Poisson by vector field along the quasotropic submanifold. So here, well, you're taking essentially partial derivatives of the Poisson by vector fields, and then you evaluate the points of the submanifold. And um, so in general, the structure you get is a, an infinity algebra structure, but since our normal model is, well, it's nice, well, because the problem we study is relatively simple, we just get um, two operations. We get the differential in a, in a gray daily bracket. Now, so I think I have roughly 25 minutes. Um, so, so now I can focus on the geometric consequences of, um, well, of what uh, we did so far. And then we look at two, two questions. So the first question, well, which I guess is very specific to this, um, to this case of lux symplectic geometry is the following. So we started with the Lagrangian submanifold inside the singular locus. And uh, so now I want to look at the, at the Lagrangian submanifolds that are nearby, meant in a C1 case, a C1 sense. And one can wonder whether you have Lagrangian submanifolds nearby that are out, that are not contained inside the singular locus. So in other words, can you push L outside of the singular locus? Well, completely or maybe even just partially. And, and, and the second question is uh, about abstractedness, which essentially means, um, so if you have if you have a first order deformation, um, so an object that satisfies the deformation equation only up to order one, um, can you actually extend it to an honest curve of deformations? So this is related to the smoothness of the 
well, of the space of um, deformations. Um, so for some of the proofs, a tool, um, a very useful tool is the following. Well, a very useful fact that you say is the following. Um, so when, when, when the Lagrangian, so this is the general fact about um, many faults with a co-dimension one foliation that is uh, defined, defined by the closed one form. So when, when the manifold is compact, then only two things can happen. So the first one is that the foliation is given by a vibration onto S1. So that's, that's uh, well, the case of the mapping, symplectic mapping torus that I, that I addressed earlier. So this happens as soon as one of the leaves is compact. And uh, the other case is that all leaves are dense. So think of, uh, say the two toros with the chronicle foliation by well spirals um, with erosion, irrational slope. And uh, so separate, cons uh, considering these two cases separately, um, well, is the way that we carried out some of the proofs. Okay, so, um, so I'll say a couple of words about um, what Morse Novikov cohomology, which is some kind of twisted Deram cohomology. Um, so I'll do it here just for manifolds, and then we will use the foliated version. So take a manifold, uh, well, say connected, and a closed one form. Then you can use the closed one form to, dif to like change the Deram di differential by adding the term at eta, the one form wedge, you know, wedge whatever you want. So this is degree preserving because theta is a, is a one form and it's close to zero because theta is closed. So um, yeah, so you get the chain complex, and um, well, for, for us it will be relevant because because of the equations that uh, that determine when a section is Lagrangian. So um, so it's interesting that the cohomology depends only on the class of eta, and uh, actually you have even a bit more if you have two representatives of the same cohomology class like eta and eta prime you get an isomorphism between the chain complexes, not, not only between the cohomologies. And um, H0, so for functions, um, well, behaves like this. So if eta is exact, then, um, well, we know that we might as well take eta equal to zero with a comet above, and well, then we get R um, since M is connected. But as soon as eta is not exact, you get zero. So you get even, even less than in the, in the usual case. And um, so this is not so hard to see because if you have a function that satisfies like df plus uh, eta wedge f equal to zero. And um, so the function must necessarily vanish in a point because if it, if it wasn't the case, then you could write eta as d of the logarithm of the function. And, and well, from this one, one then concludes that the function actually vanishes everywhere. So like the, well, one thing to keep in mind for, for uh, what I will say later is, sorry, not this, is this. Like if the class is not, not exact, then <coughs> um, the zero cohomology is nothing, zero. So as I was saying, this is relevant for, well, for what I was discussing because the, the, the deformation equations, the Mora Cartan equations, are, well, at least the second one of them is phrased in terms of this, uh, well, twisted differential. So twisted by this one form in, in, in red or pink. Um, okay, so now I'll address the two questions. So when, so L is again, my Lagrangian sub manifold inside the singular locus. When does it stay inside the singular locus if I try to, well, deform it in a Lagrangian way? Um, well, um, so it does, well, if um, H0, if H0 vanishes for, for all one forms that are, well, not just for the foliated one from gamma, but also for little perturbations of it. Um, so this, well, this is just um, well because of how, how the like the, the the equation governing the deformations looks like. So you want to find f that in particular satisfies this. 
So it has to be closed with respect to this twisted differential. And, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, <clears throat> okay. So, so, so in this, well, suggest to, to compute H0 of the foliated cohomology, well, um, of the foliated twisted cohomology in general. And um, well, okay, so, so we did this. So this is probably a bit hard to read. Let, let me um, just point out a couple of things. So, so there are two cases, the case where, well, because I'm assuming that L is compact. <clears throat> so the case where L, where the leaves of L are exactly the fibers of a vibration over S1, of a fiber bundle over S1. And that case is nice because, well, all leaves look the same. They are the fibers of this fiber bundle. And, and hence, you can take the, the, the cohomology, like the usual Deram cohomology of each leaf, and put them all together. And that will give you a vector bundle over S1, which I did not buy. I got uh, it has curly H. And um, so, 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 so the foliated class of eta then is a section of the, well, yes, is really a section of this vector bundle. And um, okay, so, so in here, well, this, this is saying that where the class at points of S1, where the class of the, of, of eta of this sec, where the section does not vanish, um, an element in the, in the zeroth cohomology must necessarily vanish. Like if it has non zero, then F necessarily has to be zero. Um, and while well, at points where eta is zero, then well, F has more freedom to be whatever it wants. And then there is something similar for the, for the, um, for the, foliated, uh, for the case of dense leaves. But I will mainly focus on the first case. Okay, so these are the two um, well, statements <coughs> we could come up with. And they are, um, well, in, uh, they, they make opposite assumptions. So, <clears throat> so the first statement says that if the class of, of gamma in the first foliated cohomology is zero, then, then you can easily push up, push out L um, from the singular locus. So, so in that case, you can push it out of the singular locus. <clears throat> and so what does this condition mean geometrically? It means that the, well, the modular vector field, the one that enters the express, the normal form for the Poisson, for the log, uh, log symplectic structure uh, can be chosen tangent to the Lagrangian. Um, so this is the, the tangent case, so to say. And uh, <clears throat> so the local module around the point uh, of the Lagrangian of, uh, the Lagrange of manifold is exactly of this kind. So, so, you, so, so I, I, so, so I, I, uh, at the beginning, I, I, I made a very rough sketch of how the local model for R2 looks like. And, and there, the, the mod, well, you could choose the modular vector field that was exactly tangent to the, to the Lagrangian, well, because in that case, actually, the Lagrangian agrees with a singular locus. So, so locally, you can always push out your Lagrangian, but there might be global obstructions. And uh, so this is the, the opposite extreme, well, under the, the assumption uh, that that is compact. So again, the two cases of uh, compact leaves, me meaning vibration or uh, dense leaves. And um, so I'm saying that the, the, um, that, that I'm in the opposite extreme, because the assumption here is that the class of gamma is non-zero. I mean, non-zero everywhere, so to say. So, so, so here, the class of gamma um, gives you again a section of, of, a, of, a, of the vector of the vector bundle of RS one, given by um, whose fibers are the cohomologies of the leaves, and if that section has no zeros, then then you are in a well rigid situation in the sense that you cannot push the Lagrangian out of, of the singular locus. In the case of dense leaves, maybe the formulation is a bit simpler. So, so, so if the, if the cohomology class, foliated cohomology class of gamma um, is non-zero, then you stay inside a singular locus. So again, geometrically, what this measures is 
how, so this corresponds to the vertical component of the modular vaccine field. So now, uh, yes, so, so I have an example. Um, um, well, so I, I, I will not try to explain all the details. I'm sorry that there is so much to read. So, so but I, so I'll, try, I'll try to explain a few things. So, okay, first of all, what log symplectic manifold I'm looking at, um, T2 core cross R2. And, um, okay, the, symplect, the, the log symplectic structure is almost the standard one. I mean, yes, the, the one of the local model. So I would be in the local model case if here I had only del del theta one. But here, well, I wrote something more complicated because I want to allow for all, all possibilities um, for the modular vector field. So this is sort of up to um, isomorphism. Actually, this is the most general form of um, a log symplectic structure in, in the neighborhood. Um, well, for, for, for which there's um, singular locus is, uh, is given by y1 equal to zero. Then I take S Lagrange on my torus. So I take the torus and on R2, not R2, so that uh, well, there is some like global obstruction. And, uh, and um, okay, so, so, so the previous statements were saying essentially that whether I can push L out of the singular locus or not, depends on the vertical component of, of the modular vector field, which is this one. And so the conclusion is like, if the coefficient here has no zeros, um, then I cannot push L out of the singular locus. So this picture is a bit deceiving because here I'm just drawing the, the singular locus Z. So to draw a picture of the whole log symplectic manifold, you have to take this and then cross with R, so think of R as coming out of the screen. So this statement is about whether you can push L out of the screen or not. So in the last 10 minutes or so, I will um, consider, <coughs> well, comment on the second question, which was, um, was, so when can you extend first order deformations to honest deformations? So first to make this a bit more precise, um, well, some, some general well, definitions. <clears throat> um, so, so let's take a differential graded Lie algebra. So, so the case of interest is when this governs some deformation problem, meaning that the Maracartan elements, the special elements of this parameterized um, well, some kind of geometric or algebraic object. But what I'm saying here for a while is just uh, purely algebraic, it's purely, purely about uh, differential graded algebras. <clears throat> so, so suppose we have a curve of special elements, of Maracartan elements that goes through the origin. So Maracartan element means that um, this equation is satisfied, the Maracartan equation. Well, then, okay, you can, you can, you can take, um, the, the velocity of this path at zero. And, and um, well, since the curve goes through zero, you get, well, you, you get the, taking the first derivative, you get, you get um, this consequence. And taking the second derivative at time zero, you get, you get the second equation here. So, well, and these are clearly some kind of constraints on, on, on um, well, on your path of elements. So, so we call an element in degree one, which is closed, infinitesimal deformation. And we say that uh, such an element is unobstructed if it is tangent to curve of Marlowe Cartan elements. Okay, so, so this definition does not come from nowhere, of course. So it comes from basically the first equation here. So, so, this, so this is saying that the velocity times zero of your path is a closed element. So these are the candidates for, um, like starting velocities of paths of monocartan elements. Um, so there is a there is a well-known criterion to detect obstruct, um, obstructedness, and it uses the so-called Kuranishi map. So it's a map. Well, here I wrote it as a map between the cohomologies in degree one and degree two, but you can write this map, of course, also for um, 
for closed um, for closed elements. Um, so for cycles. So this map is well, quadratic. It sends the class of a one cycle omega to the following. You take the bracket of omega with itself. So that is non, not necessarily zero because omega has an odd degree. And well, and then you take its cohomology class. And um, so the Kernanishi criterion says that if a first order deformation is um, unobstructed, then the, the Kuranishi map applied to that, to that uh, first order deformation is zero. And this is actually just the content of the second equation here. So, so if you have the velocity, if your little omega, sorry, little w is the velocity of a pet of Markartan elements, then it must be exact. Marco, uh, just a naive question, but, but if Kuranishi vanishes, uh, this doesn't mean that it's unobstructed, right? No, 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 definitely not. So, so, so this is, I would say, this is a useful criterion to, to detect unobstructed, sorry, obstructedness. So, so in general, the, 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 the opposite doesn't, doesn't, uh, doesn't hold. Okay, thank you. So, okay, so now let's get back to our, to our, to our problem. So I recall the equations, yeah, sorry, but there are equations that appear. So, so the equation telling you if a section is Lagrangian, if the section of alpha prime f prime is Lagrangian, what well, are these ones? And uh, well, being an infinitesimal deformation means that you are satisfying the linearized equations. So I can forget about this term with the lead derivative, I just keep the rest. And um, yes, so, so the equation depends on, the, on, on gamma, not on x. Okay, so, um, well, there do exist obstructed infinitesimal deformations. And um, well, two simple cases of unobstructed deformations are when one of the two like slots is zero. Then, then you can, you can, well, because of, because this system here is almost linear or behaves like a linear system, you can close to linear system, you can, you can easily find paths, prolongations, so paths of Markartan elements with uh, the given velocities. So what happens in general? So a very, well, probably the key lemma is this one, and it has a conceptual explanation. Um, so if the lead derivative, so alpha, alpha was a foliated one form, X was, was a, a vector field on L that, that preserves it preserves the leaves, like its flow preserves the leaves. And so it makes sense to talk about the lead derivative of alpha with respect to X. So when its class is, is zero, so when it's an exact foliated one form, then you have unobstructedness. And um, okay, so the reason for this is the following. So, so solving the more Cartan equations, so finding the deformation, um, so means finding a cycle for this twisted differential. And uh, what we're given is the, an infinitesimal deformation. So like the second component F is a cycle for this twisted differential. And now if, if these two like indices here, which are foliated one forms, they, if they define the same cohomology class, then, then there is a, an isomorphism between the complexes and you can you know, you can construct, you can apply this isomorphism to F and, and think that they lie in the same cohomology class, of course, means that the difference is uh, zero in cohomology. So, so this in particular tells you that in the local model, there is no problem. The, the, um, all infinitesimal deformations are unobstructed, despite the fact that the governing equations are actually not linear, they're quadratic. So in this is the well general statement that we got um, in the compact case. Um, so take an infinitesimal deformation. So that's a pair consisting of a foliated one form on, well, for this foliation and Lagrangian and the function. So they, they have to satisfy the, the linear, the linearization of the Markartan equation. So a linear equation. And uh, you can extend them to a path of uh, Lagrangian deformations, if and only if the Kuranishi 
criteria, applying the coordination map, you get zero. So this connects to, um, to, to um, uh, Anton's question. So, so what you have in general is just this, this, uh, this um, implication. But in this case, actually, you can show that it's an if and only if condition. And um, okay. And furthermore, if you well, if you like look at the formula, which uh, I, I, I will not do now, and write down things explicitly, you see that this happens. Well, and work a bit. You see that this happens if and only if um, the lead derivative of alpha with respect to x is exact, but not on the whole of L, only where f does not vanish. So this zf denotes the vanishing set of f. Now this, so this is a, a union of leaves. So, so here, so here we're talking about a, a saturated, uh, in, a union of leaves in, in L. And, and that in, in turn can be expressed in terms of, um, well, as, as this. And, and well, it's interesting that this condition does not depend on X nor on gamma. Uh, Marco. Yes. Uh, I have a follow-up question. So, so here, how, how do you show that uh, alpha f is unobstructed? Do, do you construct the deformation explicitly, or what's what's the way of doing it? Well, let me take a second. Um, oh, I should know this. Um, yes, yes, you can. Yeah, you, you you construct it explicitly. So. Um, um, yeah, yeah. You, you can, you, 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 so you can give a, an explicit formula, and uh, well, the, 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 the conceptual way to understand why it's unobstructed uses this lemma here, and 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 for this lemma, you can you can give a very, a very um, like explicit formula. So, so to conclude, so so to pass from the fact that the Quaternary map is zero to the fact that this is zero. Well, that's a bit playing around with this twisted cohomology. But so, so my answer is yes, there is an explicit formula. Uh, well, it involves some exponentials and... Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So, so I think I have, what, two minutes, maybe three minutes? And uh, well, I have two slides, so, so we'll not go over time. Okay, here again, an example for the, for the previous um, theorem where again, um, so you don't have to read that. everything. I will, I will highlight uh, the main things. So the example is actually exactly the previous one. Okay, so, so T2 cross R2, the Lagrangian is a torus. And um, so here I wrote down what the infinitesimal deformations are. And uh, so they're given by pairs. And well, they satisfy some constraint, some linear constraint that involves only gamma. So gamma, remember, um, well, told you what the horizontal component of the modular vector field was. Now, um, so, so, so no, not all such pairs are infinitesimal deformations, only those that satisfy this, these conditions here. If you take an infinitesimal deformation, then the fact that it be unobstructed or not doesn't depend on or on, 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 the, on the modular vector field. This is well, quite surprising, I think. And uh, okay, so here I'm just repeating two of the points uh, on the previous theorem. So, so unobstructedness is the same thing as this foliated one form being exact, um, where f does not vanish. And, 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 and this, well, can be interpreted in a well, geometric way. Um, so saying that the Levy derivative is exact means that the class of alpha itself is, uh, well, constant in some sense. And I will try to make this precise. So here I take S1. So, so remember that the Lagrangian, well, in this case, the Lagrangian fibers over S1, indeed. Well, the Lagrangian is the torus and S1, sorry, I should write it here. So, so S1 is the theta one part of the circle. It's the theta one circle. So over here you have a vector bundle whose fibers are the cohomologies of the fibers of the map from the torus to S1. So, so, so each fiber is a, 
each fiber of the of the vibration is this, is a circle. So 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 this picture is really accurate. The accurate the each one is just one dimensional R. And um, so alpha is a foliated one form. So it gives you well some section of this vector bundle, but only at points. So, okay, this always happens. So only over the part of the circle where F does not vanish. So, well, as I said, F, F is a function on L, but it's um, whether it vanishes or not, it's something that depends only on, on, on the leaves, on, on, on this one. So if, if, so let's say that, that here is where F uh, does not vanish, then you, then you look at the fiber, you, you look at, at the section only above, above that little arc. And well, if it, if it is a constant, if it is constant, in this case, I can really say constant because I have trivial vector bundle. If it is constant, then um, your deformation problem is, is, uh, is obstructed. Um, no, sorry, it's unobstructed. Otherwise it is obstructed. So very often it, it will be obstructed. And, and what I said here actually holds not only in this example, but for it holds for every case in which the Lagrangian, yeah, the Lagrangian L fibers over S1. And, and then this statement is to be interpreted in terms of the Gauss-Mann connection for, the, for this vector bundle. Um, so, so give me 30 more seconds to discuss the conclusions. So, so the question I asked at the beginning was, are the formations of Lagrangian in log symplectic geometry nice or not? Well, we looked only at a, at a special case, but it's an extreme special case. As far as the deformation theory goes, I would say, well, not as nice, but quite nice. The Lagrangian condition is not linear, but it's just a tiny bit worse, it's quadratic. And furthermore, you have some features that are well, typical for symplectic geometry, such as the connectedness. And when the obvious obstruction to um, Sorry, I should. When the when the, when the obvious um, issue about obstructedness um, is solved, you actually have unobstructed deformations, which suggests that the governing deformation um, DGLA is actually formal. And what does this say geometrically about the moduli space? Well, the moduli space is typically not smooth, and this has to do with this analysis that we did of when you can push L out of the singular locus. Because outside of the singular locus, you are in the symplectic case, so the, the modular space by Hamiltonian isotopies is typically finite dimensional, well, if L is compact, for example, but um, for L inside a singular locus is usually infinite dimensional. So the dimensions of the tangent spaces are different, so you don't have smoothness. But when you're constrained inside a singular locus, then, then you do have um, local smoothness around, around your superfluidness of manifolds. Here are a couple of references, and um, I thank you very much for your attention. Thanks a lot, Marco. Are there further questions? So I can maybe stop sharing and share again if necessary. Uh, okay, well, I seem to have raised my hand. So um, I was curious, thanks for the talk. Uh, I was curious when you introduced the Kuranishi criterion, I think um, a priori it's not even clear that unobstructed uh, classes form a closed subset. Um, well, there are, there are several issues there. So it's closed subset, I'm oh, sorry, closed subset of what? I'm of, sure. let's say the, the space of co-cycles or co, or if you prefer of uh, uh, cohomology. Okay, sorry, say it again. Um, sorry, it's not, I mean, the, okay. So the solutions of the, the zero locus of the Kuranishi map is an algebraic variety. So it's definitely a closed subset of cohomology, yes. but the condition of being unobstructed isn't a priori even, it's not clear to me at least that it's even a closed subset. But you proved that the unobstructed cocycles were a closed subset in your setting. So that seems already an interesting statement. But then what I'm curious about is are the can you find curves depending on your closed your, your locally compact parameter space 
which depend continuously on the code cycle. Um, okay. So, so I, I don't know, but so given that everything here is so, well, so nice and explicit, mm -hmm. um, and well, actually we can write explicit formula for everything. Well, it's, it's possible. It's, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know, I haven't checked that. Okay, thanks. So, so I'll make one more comment about uh, about this. So there is a bit of cheating in this slide because mm -hmm. so here I talk about um, well curve of Mara Cartan elements, and then I, I start taking derivatives. And so, well, if you want to take derivative, then you have to deal with a smooth curve. And it's not yeah, right. yeah. clear what this means. But in, in many examples, such as in this one, the DGLA is not just an abstract vector space, it's um, sections of a vector bundle. And there you can make sense of all of this. Right, right. Mm. Are there more questions? Uh, yeah, uh, hi, uh, this is Boris. I, I have a, a probably stupid question. In your example that you had uh, with this uh, four-dimensional space, you, you gave a um, formula, yes, this one. Uh, so if I take, if I go from the Poisson bivector to the, to the symplectic structure, uh, so it will be, uh, I'm just wondering about this term uh, G gamma, uh, is this symplectic structure, is it actually symplectic? I mean, is it close to form? If I just take the dual, I think that I have the differential of theta one uh, dy two. I mean, don't we have always the second, the red term zero? Um, so, I don't, so let me think just one second. I don't think so. Um, so, so, so I, I haven't tried to write. I haven't tried to write the corresponding B symplectic structure. Um, but um, well, that that should be closed. Um, so it's in the, it's easy to take the dual, right? I mean, we just take uh, GY two, and I'm I'm kind of confused about this example. But anyway, okay. so 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 this so this, so the reason why I think this well, should be correct is that so if if I view this as a um, as a as a foliated one form, it is definitely foliated closed. Like the the leaves are given by the um, theta one equal to constant, and so I have a constant multiple of d theta two, and that's. Um, yeah, well, the restriction, yes, but uh, but it's it's assumed to be the log symplectic structure in the ambient space, right? Yes, this is this is in the in a, in so a, it's um, so, so so yeah, me, maybe something is hidden here. I, I'm I'm not quite sure that I don't know. So well, maybe an, an interesting exercise is to try to see if this really commutes yeah. with itself. Take the scouting bracket, but it should it should be yeah, zero. Come home. It should be zero. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Thank you. I think Dima has a question. Um, yes, I. Um, yes, there, uh, well, there, there are some questions that uh, arose in the chat. Um, yes. so first of all, there is this issue of uh, there are two types of uh, Lagrangian submanifolds in the setting the n dimensional ones and n minus one dimensional ones. And I think, so you've been talking about just uh, uh, n-dimensional ones. And then n minus one dimensional ones, I mean, they're necessarily, of course, constrained to be Lagrangian inside uh, a single leaf uh, in, in the singular locus. But that doesn't mean that it's deformation theory uh, is necessarily, is uninteresting because it can, well, I mean, it can, it, 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 it's constrained to stay inside Z, but it's not constrained to stay inside the leaf. Yes, I totally agree. Yes. Um, so we haven't looked at that. So I, I know that Stefan thought a bit about it and, and, and thought that probably it wouldn't be very hard because you, you have this, uh, well, you have this modular vector field transverse to the leaves and, 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 and you probably are able to use it to pull back everything to the, like to a fixed symplectic leaf. Um, yeah, that's, 
Well, that's a possibility. I mean, I haven't thought about this at all until I heard this talk. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, well, so anyway, that 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 that, that was uh, that was one thing I was curious about, and uh, uh, also it uh, yeah. Uh, so it has transpired that uh, uh, if uh, if uh, uh, a, a Lagrangian submanifold, let's say, an n-dimensional Lagrangian submanifold intersects uh, the uh, singular locus at all. Uh, it's not necessarily either entirely contained in it or transfers to it. That's true. So uh, is there anything at all known uh, about this more general situation when it's like neither one or the other? Well, we, we, we haven't looked at that. We looked at the opposite extreme. So what I know is that if you, so, so in, in, the, in, the, in the story that I told today, there is no difference between Lagrangian. Well, if, 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 you, if, you, if you start with, uh, with the n-dimensional Lagrangian, if you look at the nearby Lagrangians, then it's the same to say that you're looking at Lagrangian deformations or coisotropic deformations. But in general, it is not true that um, n-dimensional Lagrangian is the same as n-dimensional coisotropic. So then the n-dimensional coisotropic submanifolds are form a, a larger class. And, and, and some examples occur are exactly the kind that you say. So that, so that, so that the submanifold intersects the singular locus, but not transversely. There's some, some kind of tangency. And there's some of so such examples are half dimensional chrysotropic, but not Lagrangian. So, uh, it's, so you, you, you would expect that uh, you know, higher brackets would appear in, uh, in the deformation theory. Possibly, yeah. No, I don't know. Non-quadratic conditions. All right, thank you. I think Alan is in line. I think we're muted, Alan. Alan, you should unmute yourself. Sorry. Um, yes, I'm wondering if there's any interpretation of some of the results or the problems in terms of the symplectic groupoid, perhaps local, of the plasma manifold. Yeah, um, I don't know. I, so I thought a little bit about it. Um, uh, yes, I, I, I don't know. I mean, every... So in every every quasotropic submanifold of a Poisson manifold has an associated Lie algebraoid and therefore gives you a, Lisa, a Lagrangian actually um, Lisa groupoid. So that that also happens in this case. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, more than this, I, I don't I don't really know. So so the fact that the Lagrangian is not transverse to the singular locus means that it is not a B-manifold. So, so it goes out of the realm of, uh, well, of B geometry, boundary geometry, in the sense that it doesn't, so L does not come with a, with a distinguished um, um, hypersurface inside it. it, comes with a family of hypersurfaces. And therefore, um, for, so I don't expect much relation between L and the B tangent bundle of the manifold. But uh, yeah, the cotangent bundle, so, so where the where the, the algebra of the Poisson structure lives, that's that's not the same. So maybe maybe there, there is more of a relation. Okay. I think Travis is next is next in line. Hi, do you hear me? Yes. Yeah, so I, I just had a couple of questions. First of all, um, I would have thought that if you're deforming a Lagrangian entirely contained in Z and you don't stay in Z, then you're going to get, you know, um, things which will in general not be transverse anymore. Well, they may still be, I guess they're still going to be Lagrangians, but they, because after all, before they were entirely contained in Z, right? So, so one question is, does that happen? The other question is, do you understand in this unobstructed case what the picture is? Is it just like you have multiple components meeting there or is it something more complicated? Um, uh, so, so about the first question, um, 
So that's a little bit more to the defining equations to try to figure out. So, um, well, I guess, so, 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 so you were asking whether it's possible to push out L from the singular locus so that it still has some interception point and it's maybe worse. I think all of this can happen by, by, the, um, by the concrete description. I, I don't know what it is now. The, 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 the concrete description um, of, um, yeah, of what, what's going on here. I mean, for example, if, if in, the, in, the, in, the, in the local model, you have, um, well, you have lots of freedom. So, so, so this is saying that every, every um, infinitesimal deformation can be extended to a path of deformations. Um, even those that take you outside of L, and and, um, and 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 there are lots of infinite, you have lots of freedom in the choice of uh, infinitesimal deformations. So, so I would expect that what you say does happen. Right, and I guess if you can, assuming you can get not just you know transverse ones, but non-transverse and. Well, anyway, these deformation picture of the things you can get by deforming something entirely contained in Z, I guess, will be contained in your deformation problem in some sense. Or... Um, well, I said, I think that can happen. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, it's... Uh, um... I mean, in some sense, if you can deform your thing entirely contained in Z and get something that, you know, is no longer there, whether it's transverse or not, then a Maurer Cartan twist will be giving you that deformation problem. So you can, if you can understand this problem, you can understand those, right? Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I would have to think, think more about it. Um, I mean, so, so the problem is local in the submanifold. So to say, you're only looking at the tubular neighborhood of the submanifold, and you don't really have control on how big on how big this tubular neighborhood is. Right. But, but you can look at local picture, I guess. Yes. And I didn't quite understand. Well, I was saying if you look at the moduli space where you have obstructions, so how complicated is it? Do you have like multiple components, which are each smooth, or you know you have something more complicated? Like what are the are the new components that arise that are interesting of the moduli space when you start with an obstructed um, direction? Um, so, so let's see if I, if I understand. Um, so, so this here is a very special case. L cannot, like C small deformations do not go outside of the singular locus. And there you are, well, almost in the setting of symplectic geometry. You stay, so because Z is a, is a modular Poisson manifold that one has a normal model, like this conormal model, but it is this cotangent variation. And, 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 and they are, so everything should be as nice as in I, I don't know how many connected components you would have. So, so this is just looking locally around the point. So, so this is not able to detect that. Right, but I mean, I'm saying that if you have an obstructed point, right, then locally your moduli space could have multiple components locally meeting at the point where you're obstructed, right? Um, ah, 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 okay, okay sorry. Uh, okay. I understand a bit better. Um, you could get some interesting components that arise when you start with an obstructed point. Yes, okay. So understand a bit, a bit more uh, what you mean. So, so, so maybe this connects to, to what Ezra was saying. So, um, so, so with, with the, so, so given the equivalence between unobstructedness and being a zero of the Koranishi, we're going to zero under the And you're talking about well, the number of components that intersect at that point. Um, yes, I, I, do, I don't know what can happen. I, I, I just know that this is one well, a quadratic function. So, 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 so you might have, uh, yes. So, I mean, it looks like an algebraic variety. That's, that's, well, I'm not saying much, but I, I don't know more than this. Okay, thank you.
So any other question? I missed all the chats. I couldn't look at this. Yeah. Oh, perfect timing here. A baby is waking up, so. I'm... <laughs> Okay, so if there are no more questions, I think we'll see each other next week. Let's thank Marco once again. Yeah, let's thank Marco. See everyone. All right, bye -bye. thanks everyone. Bye. See you next bye -bye. week. Bye everyone. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.